Hi, I'm Doug and behind me is Sailing Vessel Seeker. In this episode we'll be working on the exhaust system, engine mount for the transmission, and some pad eyes for the engine room. Enjoy. You remember Dave? Dave's back. He's going to teach us how to TIG today. Can you just dip it every once in a while and then push the puddle along? I was just washing it then. I like to side drip. That's what I usually like to do. But the easiest way to learn is just wash over it. Okay. When, you, when you pull out of that puddle, Mm -hmm. To leave it, to keep leaving a crater. If you'll just build a little ball up and pull out in that ball, then you can always grind that ball down and it won't be a hole. Huh? Cool. You're not doing anything but just letting the rod get consumed. Yeah, just kind of wash over it. All right, I can get good at this. Yeah, it's slow enough. If your fingers get hot, you can always take one of the bigger cuffs and put it on your finger and kind of let it ride on the metal. Oh, okay. Trying out our Tormach drilling stainless steel, and it's actually doing a pretty good job. See the tip come up there, it's doing a pet. So it just drills down a 32nd of an inch and then pulls back out, and lets the tip go. It's trying to keep the bit cool. So I gotta go back and figure out what kind of bit might be able to do this better. Half inch is taking out too much material, but I snapped off a quarter inch bit. He's got the same machine. This is NYC CNC. If you're looking to run Tormach, this is a good guy. Or even if you just want to have a small mill and you're trying to cut stainless and steel, uh, John does a real good job of going through it. Uh, John better be right, because I'm going to, wow, $20 for one bit. Uh, let's get two, because you know damn well you're going to break the first one. So 40 bucks for the uh, two bits, but that's cool because they charge $45 for the flange that fits this gasket and it's four bolt. This is the gasket that's on the Yamars. The, uh, the, the Kubota has it and the Kohler has it. Uh, both generators have this coming off on their exhaust. It's Dave and Dave. Hey, I'm taking a picture of your car. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, yeah, I did make car. Dave not feel bad with taking a picture of his truck. Just... What do you think? Need some butter rubbed on you? Crisco. Crisco. Listen, do you need the flanges for this engine this weekend? No. Good, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to order the right tips. I've been watching this video of John Saunders, and we'll make the flanges for this on the mill. Because I'm sure. I can cut them out with a torch. I know we could cut them out with a torch, but I need to learn how to use my Tormach better, and they'll be really pretty when I make them with a Tormach. Bad thing about making them out of stainless? Yeah. Why? Because they're going to warp when you weld them. Yeah, Remember? I know, but we can... Remember? I know. But they're stainless and they won't rust. As bad, or as quick. And they're 3 8 inch thick, yeah, they're so... They're going to be hot. They ain't never going to rust. Just a little. Yeah. Do you think they ought to be steel? They'll keep them from warping. Try to keep from hitting you with it. Don't forget Here we go. Just take your time. Right. Yep. Come on, fucking bolts in it. Well, I did that because it's all fine. Hold on a minute, Dave. We're getting hit in that. Oh. So, and you can't use 3H either. Grind the head of the bolt down just the same. Grind this weld down on this side oh, if I have to. Side. If I have to, I can still weld it right there. Custom bolts. Uh, my shirts are gotten, so it doesn't sound like that. They don't? <laughs> no more pajama party. Hard pajamas. Yeah. Say hot. I'll give you the leech. Got a little on the short side. Huh? Oh no. Kind of like my dick. Where's the nuts? <laughs> That's a dip wheel right there. Yes, it is. 
so good just redo your ground to make you feel like you've done something even if it wasn't the right thing okay yeah. I tightened that ground up did it change anything yeah it's better okay it better is good oh that looks beautiful damn you good nice work dude mucho better mucho better you can get the gasket in there Let's get in here. On the turbo. This, this still has to come. You're gonna take this out again, right? To do the inlets on it. Would that be easiest? Yes. Oh, for the. Yeah, for the other exhaust. Yeah, lay it out first. Tack it on, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what do you want? Two inch or inch and a half or what? Inch and a half. Enough. That gives plenty of room right here to run in between and insulate it. Oh, okay. That's three inches. So. Well. And you want to go steel, not stainless. Yes. Okay. I don't, it'd be nice to keep this open so I get back in there to this valve so if it came out and straight down here it gives me lots of room and then over. Hey thanks for the comments about the uh, coaxial indicator. Apparently it's Typical to bend these rods as you need to but there's also an adjustment screw underneath there so you can actually change this angle there and the other silly thing I've done is I there's a plastic clip that goes in right there that's uh, I think it's for shipping but I, it also works really handy for pressing the uh, the 3 8 inch spindle end of this into the collet and once it's pressed in you can take it out and you've got that a lot more freedom of movement in this thing so it has a, a big sweeping area and then uh, I'm just using my coolant line to keep the stabilized arm keeping it spinning and uh, working it by hand because I don't have the nerves to do it right until the needle just moves back and forth a little bit now I'll turn it on to finish it off <laughs> it's cool you just move it until it starts getting worse and then try the other direction all right that's worse all right, I'll take that. God, I'm only moving a one thousandth of an inch every time I hit the button, so that, that's good enough. Okay, success. Thank you guys. Appreciate the help. Oh, I see why it was jumping so much. There's a little nick in the side of this for some reason. I figured that was that. Oh, maybe it's where it stopped the cut. I don't know, but it shouldn't be there, but that's what's making it bounce. That's an old blade. Making a sacrificial plate. This will hold down the steel plate. Got something I can use as a shim? Sure. I need, I need it to come up for the height so that I can get that. Yeah, let's get another piece of 3 8 inch steel in there. Get another piece of plate. Uh, yeah, these are 3 8 These are the four holes on the flange. That's the actual flange material there. And we said it was four and a quarter. And then we just bolt the steel to the aluminum. Okay, so we used our coaxial indicator to find that hole, which I know is uh, one minus one, and then verify that this one's really close to it. It's off a couple thousands, but that didn't make a difference for our flange. It means it's cockeyed a little bit in the setup, but good enough. So now we know the center between these holes. So I used Fusion 360 to do the rest of this. I just wanted to practice with it. Well, I learned something interesting. If I plasma cut the edges like I did these, it can't cut them, okay, because it hardens the steel too much. 
took the next piece out, put it in, same bit. Yeah, that bit's not cutting great anymore, but it's cutting it. And uh, it just won't do the outside here, so I'm gonna try that with a bandsaw. Maybe if I cut a quarter inch off, I can put it back in there and mill it. Just a couple seconds later, that snapped off, and it's hot. It's snapped off because it was just dulled from trying to cut this outside edge, and um, gone. You can't get the other bolt in? Yeah. That looks nice. I'm, I can feel that I've got it. Dude, that is way off. Yeah, you're not gonna get a bolt in that. Yeah, you're gonna grind that down. Let's see if we can cut off the hardened bit of steel. Yeah, it's cutting fine now. Why is the torch just hardened it too much? One more thing learned. Okay, yes, it took all day to make them, but I know how to make them now, even with Fusion 360. So, I feel good about it. Just always wish it was faster. Oh no, it's just a bug that's in there. Yeah, that's nothing. Oh man, Mike had me scared. He said somebody had broken a stud off in that one. Yeah, it's just a lot of crap in there. You got an air hose and blow it out. It's made this bracket, but it actually goes on the bottom and it's gonna hold up the ass end of our transmission. All right, now some legs. All right, now let's go. On to the next thing, pad eyes. I'm out of, almost out of water. I take that back, we might have enough. Oh, good. These are the bolts Mike Harris made for us going the deck. Our tape is finally worn out. Mike is down there working on exhaust pipe fitting. Dave's building the exhaust for the generators. So this foam is working out nice. We just got to put plugs back in where we take a board off and cut through it. Do some work. This don't matter because there's a union there. I can do it wherever I want. Yeah, that's right. It is, isn't it? Yeah, that's cool. Well, first. Yes, that is a plumbing union that we're putting on the exhaust. Brilliant idea. From a brilliant man. <laughs> yeah. What's that? We've got some visitors. Okay. You can do it. Dan, his, his wife and uh, grandson, seven-year-old bolt lover. Oh, okay. Show them around. So I'm going to bring them in. Thank you. Come in. Hey, come in. Just hit it a little bit. Or does it build? Catch it on fire. Think that's got it? Yeah. There it is. Beautiful. Now the way we got this pipe going into the main exhaust, the main exhaust pipe comes through right there. So there's a little bit of a blockage on the back side as the exhaust flows and nothing on the front side. So it creates a high pressure and a low pressure right here. So it'll actually draw through this other small engine's pipe. So we hope that will keep it from backing up through it while the main engine is running. Cloudless sunset tonight. done is we've made a bunch of these pad eyes. It's just a place to hook a chain and carry loads around on, on the boat. They'll come in really handy though. They can, they can be used for lifting the generators or other cargo and we'll be putting others in around here too. And I'm really happy with how the exhaust system's coming along. He's got it all made pretty now and they even made up the pipe for the first generator. He's going to come back and put uh, secondary welds across these and then this one will be done. Be one more after it.
And thank you to everybody who signed up for Patreon. We really appreciate the support. And if you don't want to do that, consider buying some of our garb from our junk store. Winter's here, time to dress in layers. This is that dry wicking stuff. So get yours from the SV Secret Junk Store. And remember, <laughs> happy Halloween. <laughs>